Hello and welcome to Birmingham Goals Live. I'm Lewis Rolls. And I'm Josh petit Monge. And today we're joined by a couple of guys from Sons of Pitches and a couple of people from Article 19. But first, we're joined by the amazingly talented Cordelia Gartside. Yes, we Hi, Cordelia. are. Hello, Cordelia. Hello. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Um, so, uh, we were talking to you earlier about uh, what's coming up in the future for you. Mm -hmm. um, and we mentioned that you've got an EP at the moment that you've got out. Yeah, yeah. No, I do. Uh, it's called Setting North, uh, and it's an EP that I made last summer. Uh, it's got four tracks on it, and it's on iTunes. You can buy it if you want. It's £1.49. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, but we're, we're working on a new one at the moment. So What's the new one coming out? Uh, it's called uh, Medea, and it's another four track EP. And, um, uh, it was recorded this summer and at the moment we're sort of like playing around with release dates but it'll probably be sometime like next year like February around okay. that sort of time cool okay so you mentioned you started posting on YouTube when you was 15 years old yeah when did you first sort of discover that you could sing and you had this talent um I don't know like my parents both sing and um they've been in choirs like they, they met at a choir like Aww. yeah they, they met in like the line for a concert so um they've been like singing like I've always been in a house with people singing so um I think it was when I just started copying them singing like bark or, or like <laughs> bark songs um so yeah I don't know around then but then I don't know not until like probably year one or two who would you say is some of your inspiration uh, you know I guess your family must have a bit of influence but then also you know people that you think you're similar to uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, I grew up listening to Simon and Garfunkel quite a lot, but mm. then my parents are very into classical music, like in a big way. Um, so I think there was definitely like the folk influence and the classical influence, which have sort of come together in a way. Um, and then like modern influences would be probably like Laura Marling, like Angus and okay. Julia Stone, that sort of thing. So you cover songs and mm. you write original songs as well. Yeah. What do you find more enjoyable, more rewarding? I think, I mean, on a superficial level, like covering another song is really great because you can sort of put your own spin on it and you can sort of like find your own like personal meaning within that song. Um, but I do really, really love like writing my own stuff because it takes me a really long time. Like I, I spend, I, I can spend like months on a song. So when I actually get one done, it's generally one that I'm actually really proud of. And I've, I've spent time on it. I've sort of like gone over it however many times I've rewritten it. And yeah, I think it is really rewarding to sort of get that piece of yourself just out there it's really nice brilliant well we'll be hearing more from you later but thanks for joining us for now thank you very much so we all see buskers out and about in the city centre but what do we really know about them i don't know a lot so let's see if we can find out more Birmingham is fast becoming the place to find the most exciting new talent. However, we tend to forget those who provide a soundtrack to the city, the street artists and buskers who serenade us as we go about our day, who are the sound of Birmingham. As the city that's produced artists from the heavy metal sounds of Black Sabbath, the scar and reggae vibes of UB40 and musical youth, to the urban lyricism of the streets, Birmingham's diversity and vibrancy is most definitely reflected in its music. Buskin veterans Shake Shake Go travel all around the UK performing and can regularly be found in Birmingham entertaining locals with their indie pop anthems. Um, I think the main thing that drew us to busking uh, was just the fact that we could promote our band, get out there you know, yeah. face to face with the public really. So busking is just a really good way of getting out there to loads of different places and meeting loads of new people and getting them to hear your music because otherwise we can write songs but no one's going to hear them if we're in our bedroom, <laughs> like just writing them, so. Well, we've had some weird experiences when we were busking. One time there was a wedding proposal. So they're like, okay, I'm proposing to my girlfriend. Can you play? I was like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, we don't really have that many romantic songs. The same day a dog did a wee in the <laughs> guitar yeah, case. Yeah, guitar case, yeah. <laughs> The Birmingham public, are, they're really nice. They, every time we've come, they really seem to be into what we're doing, which is always good. Most of people do the same. I mean, we're not like other buskers where we don't come here to uh, make money, really. Like I was saying to someone before, if you saw your favourite band just playing in the street, it'd be so cool. As 
Shake Shake Go continue on their busking tour, another voice can be heard over the hustle and bustle of Birmingham city centre, the soulful sounds of singer-songwriter Ash Cooper. Uh, I started busking about two years ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, originally it started out just because uh, I needed the money and I wasn't that good at music. I think over the course of two years I've gradually got better at it, but it was definitely the money to begin with. And uh, out of all of the buskers like, that I've ever met in the whole of the UK, the one thing that we've all got in common is the money. It's, it sounds shallow, but, uh, but money's more important than the music sometimes. So every day is different with busking. I think that's what I like about it the most, is that you never really know who you're going to meet, what's going to happen or where you're going to go. It's, it's freedom, I think. Uh, I play 90% of my own stuff and 10% of makeup off the top of my head. To be honest, even the covers that I do play, I don't know the chords because I don't know how to play guitar and I don't know how to sing. Uh, I, I just guess. Uh, when you're a busker and you're listening to the music all the time, the sounds kind of come into your music as well. So even just people walking down the street makes almost like a nice background sound. I think you could just film Birmingham on its own and, and just put that as a record. I don't care about your money. I don't care about your family. I got you. So we've now been joined by two of the members of an a cappella group called Sons of Pitches. It's Max and Josh. Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Um, so tonight is quite a big night for you guys, isn't it? You've got, uh, you're performing at the LG Arena. So tell yeah. us a bit about what's going on there. Well, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we're, we're, there's a, a big skills festival uh, that's going on at this time of the year and it's, it's going to be a three day event all at the LG Arena. So we're performing tonight uh, for the opening kind of ceremony. I think there's going to be about 600 people there. And then again on Saturday for 2,000, hopefully. So we're We've quite excited told. about that. And you said earlier that you reckon that's probably your biggest Yeah, if it, audience. If, if it is, yeah, then, yeah. then it would be quite exciting. Are you a bit nervous about it, or do you feel prepared? Well, we're, we've got a few, we're a few members down on Saturday. Oh, so really? we've only got five of us, because that's all we can make it. We didn't really want to pass off on the opportunity to perform to that many people. So we thought we could do it because it's only three songs. Yeah. And so we're still going to do it. but. We'll, we'll have to rehearse <laughs> on Saturday <laughs> to make sure. It'll be a lot of fun, though. It will, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'll be good. So, having watched you guys on YouTube, which I highly recommend, it looks like a lot of fun. Is yeah. that, do you guys just have a lot of fun whilst doing it? It or? is a lot of fun, yeah. That's the primary reason why, why we will do it, I think. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had a tour, actually, in September, which was just us for 10 days in a <laughs> minivan, bombing about the country. And So, I mean, there's a huge amount of fun that we get out of being in this group. It's yeah, but also the, the actual performing is fun as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, arranging songs, it's just, it's cool. It's good. Do you audition for your parts? Because I, I can imagine if you've sort of gelled really well as a group and a tight-knit group, mm -hmm. and then suddenly someone leaves and you get someone new in, is that awkward at all? It is hard, like... It's, it's tough doing the audition process. I mean, we had a lot of talented people this yeah. year who came um, to our auditions, but we've, uh, we've got two new members this year. We've got Jamie, who's an, another tenor, and we've got Mide, who's our, our new vocal percussionist. Um, and we're, we're already gelling together. They're two really great guys, and we're having lots of fun. So Brilliant. And how do you decide upon the songs that you choose to cover? Um, well, it's been a few. We, don't, we do like a few different ways. We had a Facebook poll for a few of the songs, like uh, McFly. <laughs> McFly, but more, more the Daft Punk, Get yeah, Lucky, oh, that was it, yeah. that's been a big Get one. Get Lucky was, was yeah. a YouTube poll, but then others like Lose Yourself that we did, was um, we just sort of all pitched in this long, like all, everyone in the group sort of chose a song that they'd like to do, and then we all voted on which one we'd like to do, and that came out. Just before we go to play the game, um, I just forgot to mention that on Monday you'll be performing at Urban Village, won't you? Yeah. Also supported by Cordelia. Yeah, Cordelia, Which yeah. is brilliant. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to uh, go Time on to your... favourite part of the show. Exactly. We've got the taboo game, bring him aboard. <laughs> okay, so, do you guys know how to play? Yes. Yes. Uh, for those so. at home that don't, or haven't been watching, then shame on you. But first, uh, basically, uh, I think it's Max. You'll be no, Josh. Uh, Josh. 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 Yeah. Max. Yeah. You'll be guessing the uh, the words, yeah. won't you? And you'll be explaining certain words to Max, but without saying certain words underneath, won't you? Yeah. So the words are right in front of you there. Okay. And you'll have ninety seconds to do this, Josh. All right. Um, so whenever you're ready. All right. I'm I'll ready. count you down. Okay. Five, four, three, two. One, go. Right, okay. Uh, before every England football game, uh, this is sung. 
uh, three lines on a shirt. No, no, no. The God save the queen. Well, yeah. So what is that? National anthem. Yes. Okay. I play this instrument. Yep. Great. We did a cover of this song recently. Talk to Uh No, before that, it's not been overly popular amongst some people. Oh, blood lines. Yep. Uh, right, um, a couple of members of the Sons of Pitches love this. Uh, it's a type of acting, but involves lots of songs as well. And uh, musicals. Yeah, so what's the Musical full name theater. for that? That's the one. Um, gosh, when you're singing, you have to sing uh, uh, letters arranged into <sighs> slightly longer Chords. phrases. Uh, and Riff. two... No, <laughs> I think the, the, the noises that you're making usually, if you're not an a cappella group, are a... You can use oh, them vowels. in a sentence. Vowels, no. No, you can use them in a sentence if you're talking then. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> pass. Oh, I'll yeah, pass, pass this, I'll pass this. Uh, okay, in a big orchestra, Seconds. there's one guy who's at the front waving... Conductor. A... Yep. Uh, what I just said before, Five, the conductor four, is conducting what? Oh, no, I can't orchestra. Say that. Oh, close. Oh. Time up, I'm afraid, right. guys. How many was that? Grand score of five. That was oh, five. Oh. That'll do. <laughs> so at least you've beaten the what lowest the, score the of lyrics. four. Lyrics. Say words. Uh, <laughs> That's one. Well, you can say what you can say words. No, I can say. So it is tricky, isn't it? It's, it's a tough it's, uh, game. Surprisingly tough game. difficult. But you are there with five. We'll move it around later. But at the moment, it's still Poppy and Ed second at the top place, of ten. Second so you're, place isn't bad. you're second place right, at the moment, right. which is okay. You know, I think <laughs> we'll, that's still a respectable We'll settle score. for the second place. <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, guys. Cheers. Thanks for having um, us. Hopefully, we'll get people over to Urban, and uh, good luck on Saturday yeah, as well. God Cheers. God. Cheers. Thank you. But now, have you ever wondered uh, what happens behind stage of a stage show? Let's take a look behind the curtain. I'm Joe, and I am playing Dr. Joe Carden in The Children's Hour, which is a play uh, set in the 1930s America. Uh, the play is about um, a lie that is told by a girl called Mary Tilford. Um, she tells this lie in a school, and this rumour goes round about two of the teachers having a lesbian affair, and I am playing the fiancé of one of those teachers. Um, the play is sort of how this lie affects different people, and we sort of see different turn of events throughout the play. Um, my name's Emily, and I'm playing Agatha in the Children's Hour, who is the maid of Mrs Tilford, Mary's grandmother. My character is one of the only characters that actually stands up to Mary, and will tell her off if she's behaving badly. So it's quite an interesting dynamic, because there's no one else really in the play that, that does that. I'm Tilda and I play Catherine. And I'm Lottie and I play Helen. Because everyone gets on really well, there's like a lot of chemistry on stage between the cast and it's a great play, the script is amazing and I just, oh, I think it's amazing. <laughs> this play is more interesting than any other play I've done because I'm the only guy in the cast of about 12 girls, I think. There you go. I have done plays before but this one is more fun because of the people that I work with especially when there's one boy, <laughs> so it just seems a lot closer. The play is going to be performed in the Custard Factory Theatre, which is in Digford, and we're going to be doing it on the 27th, 28th and 29th of November. My name's Jamal, I'm playing Vicentio in Ten My name's Danny, uh, I'm playing Hortensio. I'm Ashley, and uh, I'm playing sort of multi rolling in the play. You should come see Taming the Shrew if you want a light-hearted approach to Shakespeare. It's a really great, fun comedy. Um, everyone can take something away from it. And it's not one of the Shakespeare's where you have to be bogged down in knowing the history of everything and knowing who Richard III is. You can just come along, enjoy it. It's, it's a nice, fun play. And I think it's going to be really good. In peace. The language is so eloquent and so beautiful. The set will be really, really cool. So that will have a whole, like, quite a novel approach to it. The, the director's doing clever things with boxes uh, and so it should be it should all look pretty fancy I think. I'm Nick Charlesworth I am the composer and musical director. Sort of Eastern European brass music like lots of trumpets and cool chords. It's a really good show to see because it's quite light-hearted, but it's got some, some nice themes in it as well. 
Welcome back. And now we're joined by two people that have experienced this fear and stress of setting up a show. John is all the way from Article 19. We've got Emma and Damon. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hi. Cheers, guys. So here we have Emma, who's the director or assistant director, yeah. and Amy, you're the stage manager. Yeah, I am, yeah. So first, just tell us a bit about your role and what the difference is between the two. Uh, I'm assistant directing Children's Hour, and I just help Phoebe, who's the director, um, place the actors and encourage them to get involved in the play together and also obviously teaching them um, their role and how to get involved and um, just assisting her really making sure it's all running smoothly. And uh, the, the kind of creative minds of it tell the stage managers what they want and then we make it come to life visually with props and costumes and set designers were kind of the talking point between uh, all the different departments so uh, with costume, props, sound, lighting, we take note of everything and then make it look nice when it's on stage hopefully. Brilliant. So in terms of casting, what do you look for in, in talent? Go on, um, it's quite mm -hmm. hard, um, it's quite nerve wracking, you just want the right people to come in for your, obviously you have the characters in mind um, and you just want them to shine and you give them a little bit of script to read and give them time to shine but um, sometimes you do just know when someone walks in and they do the it perfectly and how you want it but it is hard to find yeah. the right people. No, we had a few people definitely that came in and yeah. we were just like yes definitely we know exactly who we want them to be and then there were some people who if you give them a bit of the script but you know that in a different scene they might get angry or they might be sad so we did a bit of improv in our casting as well um, with the producer and director sort of taking on roles and then making the auditionees react to them so we could mm. see how versatile they were. So you're both doing different shows but both for Article 19. So where can people find them? How can they you know, uh, go and see them and buy tickets and stuff? Online. Um, there's lots of Facebook groups going around and I think you can buy tickets on Guild TV. I mean, not Guild TV. Guild. <laughs> Guild. The Guild website. The Guild website. Yeah, um, ours go on sale this, this weekend. Yeah, ours go on next, next weekend. Okay. weekend. Yes, you can get them online. Taming of the Shrew, which is what I'm stage managing, is on the 5th, 6th, 7th of December with a Saturday matinee as well in the Deb Hall, just upstairs. Yeah, Brilliant. and yours is? Where's um, 27th, 28th, 29th of November at the Custard Factory in Digbeth. So Excellent. All right. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, Thank right, you very much. But now I bet you're wondering what's going on this week. Well, never fear. Dave Vanier is here again. It's now time yes. for your weekly update. Yes, Obama. Yeah, I will get down to that right away. Can I, uh, can I call you back? I just need to find out what the guilty be is going on this week. Starting with tonight, KT Tunstall is playing 7.30 at the Symphony Hall, Birmingham. Suddenly I see a reason to go out tonight. Hey, 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 this Thursday we have Guild Council right here in the Guild Council Chambers at 6pm. Come here or watch live at live.guildtv.co.uk. I don't know, all those policies and motions. It's confusing enough to knock that sombrero right off your head. This Friday the council hits our screen. It stars Brad Pitt, Javier Bardem, Penelope Cruz, Cameron Diaz. It's a who's who of attractive people. I know you're thinking, why wasn't I asked? Or you can go see Don Hemingway, starring Jude Law playing the Cockney safe cracking expert travelling to France with his best friend, Beau Richardy Grant. I love Don. This Saturday, the Royal Ballet Academy of Belarus are performing the Nutcracker at the Reddish Palace Theatre. Probably won't be as good as that Barbie film, but why not give it a watch? So that's what's going on this week. Back to you in the studio. Two. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week, guys. But playing you out with some live music is Cordelia Gatzard. Thanks for joining. See you later. the street.
explain it Can't I be 